What's up, everybody? It's your boy Phil Shock, and then I see Ted Jog here with our draft analysis. Um, uh, hold on, just wanna. Oh, that dark one looks so sick. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Welcome to another draft analysis, and this is gonna probably be the last last league I will be uploading. So once TBL and WC are gone, you're probably going to see one more wife, uh, one more league being uploaded because this is going to probably be one of the few last leagues I'm doing that I actually will upload for us before the Brilliant Diamond, Brilliant, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl are released. God, I cannot talk. So I'm looking forward to this. And you may be wondering yourself, wait a minute, why do you see Radical Red Team Builder? That is because, ladies and gentlemen, this league, We'll be using the mechanics of Radical Red's ROM hack. So we will be battling with Pokemon from Radical Red, which basically has every single Pokemon in the game itself, which is from Gens 1 through 8? Yeah, 1 through 8. Yeah, 1 through 8. Which is uh, pretty exciting. I'm really excited for this, and I am really looking forward to this. I am super excited. And um, uh, really can uh, it's interesting. Um, this is the UPC. Um, I believe yes, the UPC. And uh, I actually have. You may think that this sounds like a new league. Well, technically speaking, it's not really. I've actually competed in the UCP UPC just recently. Actually, I took over a team for my good buddy Dark Double Twenty Six. Um, go check up on YouTube and on Twitch and his Twitter. Go ahead and do that for me. But anyways, uh, I took over his team, and fun fact for all, I didn't win a single game. Uh, two of the games I think I lost just because they were tough matches. One I lost to just somehow me either messing up or showdown messing up. So, and yet somehow, someway, with the two wins that were already on the two wins that I was already received when I took over the team for Brendan, uh, it was enough to clinch me playoffs by even losing, a, like, not winning a single game. And then I won my playoffs match, and I actually technically finished from taking over a team. I finished in semifinals, only winning one game in my entire career that league. Probably the most under, most, most weirdest achievement of my entire life, but hey, you do what you do, and you do what you gotta do. So, anyways, we are here now to draft our own team, and I think we have a very powerful squad. I think this is... Definitely a bit of a more of a power heavy team than I've drafted before because it does have a lot of top tier mons than it does actually like usage wise. So really excited for that. If you guys are excited for this new league though and for us to do some radical red type of Pokemon showdown form. I actually know a good friend of mine, Shadow Gallade on YouTube. Go check him out. Um, He actually did this before. He had some fun. He had some good mons. Um, he didn't do that well, but he had some fun with it, and that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to have some fun using some of these mods, and kind of go over why exactly some of these mods are absolutely busted in this type of, uh, format. So before that, I'm going to go ahead and break down the original team that I had, but before we also get to that, I need to discuss to you guys what my draft position was. So there were two more leagues I decided to do, a kind of chilled Uber's Wi-Fi league, um, that I'll be doing off-screen, because I, I can't find his Wi-Fi contacts for TBO, so that and that sucks but i might try to do something else with that so who knows but there was also this league in that league i got seventh pick in this league i got eighth pick i don't know why and how that corresponded so perfectly to how this happened but it did but regardless i got eighth pick so i was able to really like pair off things that were really good so there was that so the bottom two rows actually was the original team the original team was nagata del mew Rotom Wash, Mel Metal, Tabubulu, Volcarona, Weavile, Rhyperior, and Tauros. Now, this was something I was really excited for. This was a really good power offensive team. The problem with the team, however, was it only had two ways to realistically remove hazards, and one of the two didn't want to be forced to do that every single week. Also, it just felt like the team didn't really... I mean, synergized probably decently enough, but not to the point where it was definitely great. And the one thing about something with this is, as you're going to see, I dropped them. Um, Melmetal gets clear body this game, which is not... Like, you may think that's a really bad thing to say, 
But Double Iron Bash is now only 120 with no boost in it offense. And Double Iron Bash is one of those broken moves that is really good on Mel Metal because of Iron Fist. And Iron Fist also really boosts up a lot of things. Now, could have Mel Metal been worked still really great? Yes, but overall, I just didn't think it was worth it. So I made transactions to my team that are going to be valid for my week one matchup, which I'm going to actually go prep for and up on a record soon. So the grind never stops when you're a Pokemon master. But, um, so, and, so anything, oh, okay, yeah. Okay, but let's go first over the month. I kept on the team, and that's actually going to be the first three wolves to talk about. But I'll kind of give some backsides to them a little bit, and then kind of more as we could discuss. But I kept Megatodel, Mew, and Weavile. The reason why I kept those three, I think those three were the ones I really wanted the most on this team overall after some time considerations and thinking, just because some of them are great mods I've never really used, mods I've barely used, and mods I've just never used in general, so... Uh, the rest of the team I have used a bit here and there for, and uh, I just felt like this would be a really good way to kind of just, if it's going to be one of the last few leagues I get to do, I want to kind of use some old favorites, try out some new ones, and just get some exploring going with the group. So, with that being said, let's go over the new squad. Like I said, an eight pick overall. I want to actually just see if we can get Magirna first for our first pick, since that was a lot. It went first overall. So, yeah, my luck to get that straight out the window. Anyway, it also take a little bit of a break here. I'm actually drinking some pop. Uh, some good old Pepsi. Pepsi, sponsor me. I would love to sponsor you. But um, first pick overall was Nagatadel. And I'm actually a little surprised that this made it to me in the eighth round. In the end of the round right here. Just because of the fact that Nagatadel, yeah, it's not probably the greatest mon on paper. Because of kind of limited coverage and stuff like that. But this one is dummy broken, dude. 127 special attack with 121 speed. Helps it outspeed base 110s and 115s, which some of the those speed tiers are super elite and very offensive heavy. This thing lets me run scarves to outspace that, which is really, really good. Enough to even probably run modest against them as well, which I think is really, really good. And I think it's because of Radical Red, this thing's movesets are actually pretty, pretty good. Like, he's got access to fire covers as special. He's got access to nasty plot, which we already knew about. And another thing to state about this is that everything that is legal in Radical Red's move pools and everything like that is 100% legal. So hidden power is allowed. Cut moves. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, pun was not intended. Cut. Cut's base 75 now in this game? Jesus! Didn't even know about that. Um... But, like, return, frustration, hidden power, pursuit, yada, yada, yada. All that is back in the game and is going to be allowed for this league. So, definitely got to play a bit smart. Definitely got to play careful. And uh, just got to go over the flow on that one. So, uh, But Nagato, a great first overall pick for me. I've never used this name before. I was actually tempted to use this in LDL's uh, doubles league when I was making my transactions. Stuff I actually wanted to fit this some of the teams so damn badly, but I just could because of how everything was going. So... Overall, I'm super excited for Nagatadel. I'm actually really hoping to do well with this mod. Um, give me another mod that can pivot with U-turn. Give me a mod that actually gets access to Toxic Spike. So if I got or like two or three moves I already got planned out, I can either run like Nasty Pull or the Toxic Spikes or Toxic Spike Sub or something like that. Just being able to just do whatever I want in customizing this Pokemon could be really, really good for me. Which I think benefits the team a lot. A lot from a lot of this. So. Uh, excuse me, by the way. Ugh. My nose has been stuffy a lot of recent. With our second overall pick, I picked up an old favorite that we haven't used in a very long time, and I have been... I would definitely say there's mixed mixed uh, feelings towards this. Um, it is infinite, our Mew here, and, um, and the reason why I've been so mixed in 50-50 with Mew is the one time we had Mew, we did fantastic with it. We did really, really good. Then the other time I had Mew, it was like, it was good. I didn't go with my gut on one set, and it kind of cost me that game. And then there were times that we just, I don't know. We just, I don't know if we used Mew great. I don't know if we used it badly. But overall, this is our last, this could be our last hurrah, because who knows if Mew will even be allowed in Brilliant Shining Diamond Pearl competitive metagame and stuff like that. But overall, Mew is an amazing mon. It can do anything and everything I want. 
For this team, it can definitely play supportive. It can, this team can play its own setup sweeper. If you don't have a dark type, this thing is a stupidly annoying mon to have to fight. And I love Mew. Mew is definitely one of those mons I really like to try more of. I think there's more chances I could have used Mew, but there are times where I just don't have the typing and the points or something like that or the tiers for it to make it work. But Mew is definitely something I am really looking forward to using this season. And uh, it gives me my first real remover on the team as well, which I think is very viable options as well. So I think it's really good. And like I said, we kept Weavile. Weavile is the one I've only used in competitive formatting for one league, one time. And that was, I believe, our MVP, or it was Garchomp, one of the two. But this was definitely one of our, if not the MVP for our one run in our DBL. This Mon literally got to claim KOs. This Mon literally just got to click freaking buttons. This Mon was just so freaking good. I loved Weavile. Weavile is an amazing Pokemon. I think Weavile overall is really good. I think having the pressure ability is also really good because it kind of stops any potential stall sets. Again, another 125 speed tier, which doesn't really help pairing off with the Galileo's 121, but gives me, that, again, that one elite speed that we needed for the team, which I think is really good. And I think giving us also one of the best, if not the best, dark type to use for this type of format as well because of how fast Weavile is and how hard Weavile can strike. So I think it's going to be a really great mod for our team. And I think overall it's going to be a best, one of the best mods on our team. Now we go to the mod I've had the absolute most success in terms of draft league history for me and this channel. For guys who don't know that every time I have sand and I have an Excadrill on my team, I will never miss playoffs. And I have never, ever, ever, ever missed playoffs with sand. So... Could I can make history with myself and not? That's debatable. But if there's one mod I can count on to get the job done for me in sand, it is Excadrill. This thing honestly has either 50 or 60 kills. 50 plus kills or 60 plus kills. And in terms of probably kill death ratio, it's probably its differentials probably in the 20s or in the 30s right now. Exodrill has been that most successful mod ever. Every first time I ever used Exodrill was in Sand. And the thing finished, I think, overall with 20 plus kills and like 8 or 9 deaths. So it finished with a 10, like 10 plus differential in the first season I ever used that thing. Exodrill is just a monster, dude. Exodrill with Sand Rush just outspeeds so much in the metagame, which is really, really great. There's a lot of versatility with met, with extra as well, which I think is really great. I have used weakness policy sets on this thing to really work well for us, and have I literally swept a rain team with just extra drill with no sand. That just goes to show how good I am with this Pokemon. I just know how to use this mod. It gives me a rapid spinner now, which is really good. This mod is just so it's just so broken. It's really a mod, and the fact that they push this mod to you, you, I'm looking at you, Smogon. You push this boy to you, you, and I. I feel offended by that. This is a great mod. Definitely the better ground type for the team and a bit of a better steel type for us. And it's just overall just an amazing mod. I'm so excited to have extra drill again. I hate myself for this. I honestly do. But I had no choice because at first I was doing this idea to kind of get Melmetal a really good time to shine. But then I dropped it and forgot about it. And now I can't take it back. But overall, this is not a bad regret pick right here. In my honest opinion. And here's a reason why. Uh, this is Mega Bonnet, which if you guys don't know. And Mega Bonnet in this game becomes a normal ghost. Now, obviously, if you've seen the, you know, Pokemon trailers, which I won't spoil it, which we got new Hitsunian forms, which I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, of certain Pokemon that are becoming normal and ghost type. I'm not going to say what they are, because I want you guys to at least see the trailer. But um, we got normal ghost types in the technical first official of those but in this game mega manette is normal ghost and why is normal ghost you may think it seems questioning this is honestly probably one of the most broken type combinations out there because this gains an immunity to both normal and ghost type attacks this gives you a dark gives you a ghost type that can actually be able to kind of check dark types to a certain degree in a certain formatting and plus this gives you one of the best psychics one of the best ghost switches in the entire game since ghost is really spammable 
Bennett still keeps Prankster, which is really annoying for a lot of teams. We get access to things like Willow West, Cotton Guard, Trick Room, and stuff like that. The screens as well. Destiny Bond. I had my fair shares of doing that, having to experience that, and it's really stupid. But overall, Bennett is really, really great. I think Bennett can be really good. I named it Acorn because my buddy, buddy Acorn calls us his MVP. Acorn, even though this is your MVP, it's still trash. But I only use, I'm only using it just because I never used it before. And plus, I already made a commitment to it, so I can back out of it now. Base 75 speed here is also not that terrible. Again, like I said, it's got a trick room, so it can actually make trick room kind of work for it. And it kind of can work for a couple pieces of my team as well, which we'll kind of get into a little bit here. Speaking of which, the things that can take really advantage of it um, is my Gigalith Crystal here. Um, Gigalith, I think I have come to terms as being the second best Saiyan setter, in my opinion, behind Hippohoudon. Uh, Gigalith is just so good, dude. I love using Gigalith. It's just a fun mod. Even though it, didn't do, it doesn't do too much for me, it's a Gigalith. It sets up sand. It's not meant to do a lot. But for what it did, it definitely did a great job. I think I got like five kills within one league. And uh, I just love Gigalith. Gigalith is cool, and it's definitely one of the best shinies in the game. Like, come on. You can't tell me that looks sick. But great defensive mod. Gives me my third stealth rocker with having Mew and Drill being stealth rockers. Actually, does Benek get stealth rock? He does not get self rock. Okay. I would have been broken if he was. But uh, Gigalith, I think also I'm on the connection to take advantage of Trick Room and be a very good offensive rock instead of just a normal bulky rock that just sets up sand. Which is something that I really want to tell you to take advantage of this season, which I think is going to be really, really cool. Going to the last couple of picks, we went with, we got our boy Rotom Heat, which is my most favorite and most successful Rotom. I have ever drafted. I have literally 6 0 someone with Rotom Heat in the past, and I just love this Pokemon. It is so awesome, dude. This thing can definitely be defensive. This thing could be pretty offensive. This thing has nasty plot. This thing is an inhibitor. It is a defogger, which can also reliably run defog as well. So it gives me that. Now, third has a removal on my team. So having three has removals, I can actually reliably re run those moves each and every single week and actually be really good. Um, one of the two defoggers can obviously get replaced into doing more of a support role or an offensive role, depending on the match, how many are having to get defogged and others haven't. And overall, Rotom, I love this thing so much. Nasty Plot Overheat is so broken in this generation, and, and just in general as well. It's just so good. And I really think Rotom Heat is going to be an amazing mod. Haven't used my little oven man in a long time, actually, so I'm really happy to have him back, especially since I believe we did win a championship with now, this next pick may seem questioning. I understand that. It is Torterra, but here's some reasons why. Torterra, first off, gives me another stealth rocker for this team, which now provides a really good limited support around rocks, which I think is really cool. It does give me a secondary ground type, but was the secondary ground type I needed to check grasses? Because the grasses are definitely a bit of an issue versus my team, like, on in terms of really kind of uh, depending on the grasses, because there are some grasses that can, can be... Uh, bit problematic for some of my team but overall i think torture is really great but some of the reasons why i drafted this thing were two reasons one it gets an ability called self-sufficient which at the end of every turn of its max hp it gets 116 of its own. so basically if you have leftovers on this thing you get that plus leftovers to make this thing so stupidly bulky and annoying that it just won't die so overall, I think that's really, really great. And another reason I grabbed it was Rockhead. Rockhead on this thing is so dummy broken because of the fact that you can run things like Double Edge. You can run Head Smash now. Now you can go and run Reliable Wood Hammer, which does not reduce anything. And I just love, love Torterra. Torterra is an amazing mod. I'm really hoping to use it really well this season. And uh, you did use Torterra that one time for the TBL preludes, and I actually really love Torterra there. I'm hoping to bring the energy over back here and hoping to have some fun playing that way. With our last real main pick, we actually picked up Keldeo. Now, I was actually going to pick up Urshifu Rapid Strike, but looking at my team, I didn't have a lot of special attackers on this roster. So I needed to make sure I had at least another main special attacker. And overall, this is a mod that I don't really want that can be okay with being burned versus Urshifu getting burned every week for six months. I really do love Keldeo. I've seen a lot of great people use Keldeo. There's amazing people like my boy Wylander. There's also even more amazing people like Aquarius who have used Keldeo to amazing success for their teams. 
And uh, I think this is the time I try this mod out. I have always kind of dropped it. I did use it once. I think it finished off neutrally for me, but overall just didn't use it all that too much. But this is, I think, the season where I give Keldeo my best shot and definitely do um, something cool. It's actually, now thinking about this, I might switch up the nicknames to be the people that have really supported the most and the people I really like. So I might change these nicknames. Who knows? But overall, though, Keldeo, really good Scarf Mon, really good Mon to run Calm Mind with, good Mon to have priority with Aqua Jet as well. And just overall, it's a really good Mon that can run Scarf and Specs every single week. It just is so good. And I'm really looking forward to it. And last but not least, it is the. It is the bus! Beep, beep! Charge a bug. And honestly, this mod could actually do a lot of work with now having Trick Room on my side. This thing can actually be pretty offensive. But literally, I only drafted it. Only drafted it. Are you kidding me? It doesn't get sticky webs. Then why the hell did I draft this? Well, now I regret everything. Well, I guess we'll never use it. Ah, uh, your body had sticky webs, so apparently it doesn't have it in this game now, so I guess it's pointless to talk about this one. I guess overall it's just another decent ground type switch in or something. I don't know. It could be used all kinds of stuff. Anyways, that's going to be the team, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you are new. Join the Fish Shocker crew today because you're the king of the crew. And with that being said, I will see you guys for week one as we actually will take on a really big name in week one, and that is being Jacob, as always. And I'll go into a little bit more how big of a matchup that's going to be in the team builder. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.